Okay, let's start. Uh. Okay, so set notation and Venn diagram. Okay, so on this Venn diagram, show in the answer space, ask you to shade. Okay, this is for shading. Uh. So for shading, uh, usually for intersect, this one is intersect. Uh. This is intersect. So usually for intersect, I will do my working shading. Okay, working shading. Uh. So at the side, I will draw with pencil, of course. A and B. This one I just draw here. Uh. So they say A prime. A prime means outside of A. Outside of A. Uh. So you shade everything that is outside of A. One direction. So you accept you shade everything except A. Okay, except A. Uh. Then after that they say B. Means that I'm gonna shade B as well. And then this time round you're gonna shade the other direction. So but from this working shading, you can see that the moon of the bee is the one that has two lines. Okay, so it means that for the final one, you should be only shading the moon of B. Okay, so for intersect, for intersect, always draw the working diagram, working shading. Uh. So of course this one, you want to erase or not erase, it doesn't matter. Main thing is, you have to see, okay, where is the intersect? Region which is the moon of V and shade it in the answer. Okay, so uh, let's move on to part B. Okay, so given that the universe is an integer that is between 2 and 20, and important is you need to know whether 2 and 20 is included. So there is no equal sign, so that means 2 and 20 is not included. So let's list down what is inside our universe. Huh? So our universe starts from 3 because 2 is not included. So it's 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have a lot of numbers here. So I'm not going to list down all of them. So you will put dot 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 dot. Then just put 18 and 19. As long as from by looking at this, you know that you have 3 all the way to 19. All the numbers between 3 to 19. Okay. Next, A. A is a set which is inside the universe. So you only take the numbers from the universe. Huh? A is prime number. So take note that prime number, so you start from 3. So 3, 4 is not prime. 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 19. So all these are the prime numbers that is from the universe. Okay, always list them now. Huh? Next, for the set B, is a multiple of 6. So I will start from... 6, 12, and 18. So these three numbers are inside my universe, which is multiple of 6. Wow, that three years ago, uh, that's quite some time. Good for you. Okay, so C. C is a bit tricky. C, they put in an inequality here. So we will do working at the side. Uh. So 4x minus 1 more than 20. We need to solve this inequality. So you be 4x minus 4 more than 20. Bring the 4 over. 4x more than 24. So my x is more than 6. So this uh, set C is actually integers that is more than 6. So of course we start from 7, right? So 7, 8, 9, dot, 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 all the way up to 18 and 19. So you can see that for the C, is all the numbers from the universe except 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, because we want more than 6. Okay, so now we have all the elements in my A, B, C. We can answer their question. Huh? So for part 1, they ask to find the elements in B intersect C. So you look at your B and C, you can see that the intersect is... Very easy one is you look at B. B has only 3 elements. So you ask yourself, what elements inside B are also inside C? Okay, so it's only 12 and 18. So you will write, B intersect C, the element is 12 and 18. Done. Okay, so B intersect C is this. Huh? Okay, so let's move on to the next part. They say, okay, I ask you to find the element X. Okay, they tell you the properties of X. They say X is an element. So take note that this symbol represents element. So they say it is an element of 
B union C prime ma. So B union C prime. What are there? What are the elements inside this? Okay. Now you look at your elements here B and C ah. Yeah. So B union means union means together ah. Union means together. Union equals to together. So they want all B and C but with a prime. So look at the B and C, you can see that it is actually 6 all the way to 19. 6 all the way to 19 but prime means outside of this. So you can see that it's only 3, 4, 5. Because 6 to 19 are already inside the B and the C. So it's only 3, 4, 5. So this one means I only have 3, 4 and 5. Okay, so B union C prime is only these three elements, 3, 4, 5. And they tell us that X is not an element. So take note that this means not an element. So let's take a look at A. My A is prime number. So when they say not A, means that it is not a prime number. So you look at these three numbers, you will ask yourself which one is not prime number. So therefore, we know that x is 4. Because 3, 5 are prime numbers, only 4 is not prime number. So it's 4. Okay. So that is for this question 1. Huh? So I have uh, go through about whereby you need to know how to do the shading. Okay. When, whenever you want to shade for intercept, you need to do the working shading. And then for this kind of set notation, what you need to do is list down the elements, okay, so that, that after that it's easier for you to see. Okay, there is only two signs, uh, it's only union or intersect. Okay, union means together, intersect, in other words, it's asking you what is the common. Okay, okay, let's move on to the next question. This one a bit complex because they talk about triangles. Okay, they say okay your universe is all the triangles. Then they tell you A is isosceles triangle, B is equilateral triangle, C is right angle triangle. So they want you to draw a Venn diagram to represent universe A, B, and C. So of course we know that universe is here. And how about A, B, C? So, take note that A is isosceles. So, I need to see, uh, you need to analyze the three types of triangle over here. Uh. Okay, wait a uh. bit strange. Weird. Yes, I will go through matrix later. Okay, so then after that, uh, okay, so all triangles, of course, is the universe. Take note that now A and B let's relate. Uh. So equilateral triangle is only three, means three equal sides, and all angles are 60 degrees. Okay, equilateral triangle only have one. Okay, and equilateral triangle, I also can call it isosceles triangle because isosceles triangle means that we have two sides are equal. And equilateral triangle definitely have two sides are equal. So, you know that when we talk about A, the B is actually inside. The B is actually inside of A. Huh? So now let's take a look at how about uh, equilateral triangle and B, B and C. Okay, B and C. Okay, so let's see B and C relationship. Equilateral triangle and a right angle triangle. First of all, right angle triangle, one of the angle must be 90 degree. One of the angle must be 90 degree. But my equilateral triangle, three angles are 60 degree. So it's impossible for equal, equilateral triangle to be a, a right angle triangle. So B and C is disjoint. So B and C is disjoint, means there has nothing in common. Okay? Next, let's see how 
talk about uh, right angle triangle and isosceles triangle. A and C. So how is A and C related? This one can, uh, pen you can draw. Okay, it's only the shading you use pencil. Uh. Okay, so A and C. And if I'm going to use pencil, you, cannot, you are not able to see. Uh. Okay, so A and C, how are they related? Okay, right angle triangle, you see, uh, I have a right angle triangle that can also be isosceles triangle. Agree? So it means that I can have a right angle triangle which is also an isosceles triangle. So it means that A and C, there is a common triangle which is between A and C. So the A and C will look like that. That means A and C have one common. The common triangle is of course this one which is isosceles plus a right angle triangle. Okay? Then after that, what we're going to do is uh, draw, combine all this drawing into the diagram. So we can see that I can just draw the A with the B inside. Okay, with the B inside, uh, with the B inside. And my C, and the C make sure that you don't touch the B. Uh, so the C you can draw like that. Let's say for example like that. So as long as you can see that the B and C is disjoint, the B inside inside of A, okay, and the A and C is that's a common, and that's how you draw the relationship between A, B, and C inside the Venn diagram. Okay. Okay. So a triangle has sides 7 cm, 24 cm, and 25 cm. So on the same Venn diagram, they want you to mark and label the point T to represent this triangle. So this 7, 24, and 25, definitely this is not. 7, 24, and 25. It is definitely not equal lateral triangle. Right? Definitely not. It is also not isosceles triangle because they don't have any equals, any sides that are equal. Yes, you need to know the properties of triangle in order to do the questions. So, let's see whether is this a right angle triangle. <clears throat> so, to prove whether is it a right angle triangle, we're going to use Pythagoras theorem. So always take the two shorter one. 7 square plus 24 square will give me 625. And 625 is 25 square. So you can see that the third side is 25. Okay. So we know that the triangle with 7, 24 and 25, it is a right angle triangle. So where do you label your T? Your right angle triangle is, in, uh, is C. Uh, so that means the T will be inside the C. Okay. And it is not isosceles triangle, so it cannot touch the A, it cannot touch the B. Uh. It must be uh, purely just inside C alone. Okay? Thanks for the rose. Okay? So that is for question 2. Uh. Okay, let's move on to one last question. Where does B go? Huh? But where does B go? I don't understand what's your question. Okay, so question 3. Same thing. Uh, integer is x between 1 and 11. 11 is not included, 1 is included. So let's list down. So my universe, I have 1 all the way 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, these are not many numbers, so I can just list down 1 to 10. Huh? Okay. Not exactly very straightforward, Raphael. The question 2 can be quite confusing for some students. Huh? So you need to know the relationship. What I did was you have to ask yourself, A and B, are they related? B and C, are they related? A and C, are they related? How are they related? I draw them separately, then I combine them into the Venn diagram. Okay? Okay, so A is... Factors of 4. So A factors of 4 is very easy. Find, how to find factors of 4 is 1 times 4, 2 times 2. You list down all the possible uh, multiplication for 4. Uh. So 1 times 4, 2 times 2 are uh, possible multiplication. So the factors of 4 is only 1, 2 and 4. Okay? So it's 1, 2 and 4. B. B is prime numbers. Okay, so take note. Uh. So common mistake is student take 1 
as prime number but one is never a prime number the smallest prime number is two so for the b right it must start from two ah huh? so don't do not include one because one is not a prime number ah huh? so two three a hey, sorry dreaming four is not prime number huh? so it's two three five seven eight nine ten no more so it's only four elements so it's only four elements which is prime number which is from the universe so after listing them down now they ask you okay list the elements in b prime how to draw the venn diagram for question two part b No need to draw Venn diagram. Right? They say on the same Venn diagram, which is this Venn diagram, they ask you to mark out T. So my T already, my T is this triangle, which is a right angle triangle. I have used Pythagoras theorem to show that it is a right angle triangle. So my this triangle, they ask you to mark T inside the Venn diagram. So in the same diagram that I draw in part A, I just put a T inside the set C. Okay? Hello. Okay, so next, list the elements in B prime. Okay, set notation depends on most of, of most of the school teach in sec 2, but sometimes they drag all the way until sec 4 then they teach. Huh? Okay, so need, uh, B prime. My B is prime number. So B prime means it's not prime number. So it means that you will just B prime, go and look at your universe. What are the numbers that are not prime? So it will be 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. 8, 9, and 10. So you have 6 elements that is not prime number. Okay? Then after that they say, list the elements in A prime intercept B. A prime intercept B. So it means that they want to look at the B, yeah? and A prime. So A prime, because you see, your A is factors of 4. So A prime means not factor of 4. So this one actually easy la, because your universe is only a few numbers. Huh? So you can just list down A prime. A prime will be 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And if you want, you can write out the B also. B is 2, 3, 5, and 7. So intercept means is intercept means what is common. What is common between these two? Okay, and you can see that the common is only 3, 5, and 7. So you say, therefore, the A prime intercept B, the elements will be 3, 5, and 7. Yes, important. Huh? What are prime numbers? Okay, numbers divisible by 1 and 7. Good. Um, yes, well done. Okay, prime numbers are numbers that only have two factors, 1 and itself, excluding 1. Because in case speaking, one do not does not fulfill that it has two factors, right? One only has one. It doesn't have two factors. So one is not a prime number. Huh? Okay, next. They say, okay, now they ask you to on the Venn diagram shade the region will represent A prime union B. This is easy. Why? Because this is union. Union means together. It is different from just now my question one. My question one is intercept. So when it's intercept, it is good to draw the working shading to see what is the common, the overlap. But for union, you don't need to bother to draw the working shading because union means together. They say A prime. So okay, I'm going to shade A prime means outside of A. Okay, shade outside of A. Shade everything of A. Sorry, outside of A. Okay, shade everything outside of A. Then they say shade the B. So that means I just extend, okay, my B also need to be shaded. So it means that you are shading everything except the moon of A. Okay? My craft is okay. Good luck for your science test. Okay? You can refer to the TikTok live replay on the YouTube channel. Okay? And download the uh, the PDF worksheet from the Telegram channel. Okay, so basically that is set notation and Venn diagram. Okay, I have covered how to shade intercept. Okay, do the working shading, and then as for those set notation, always list down the elements so that you can see clearer. Okay, and then you can see. Okay, the one thing over here is they never they never mention ah. Uh, 
I mean, see, this one is asking you to list the element. If you see this N, if you see an N in front, this means that asking you to count the number of elements. So the, the doing is still the same as this one. So you look at this one. We have three elements, right? So when there's an N in front, you don't have to list down the elements. You just tell me that there are three elements. Okay, this is, uh, I put additional, huh? this is additional, additional question. So when you see an N in front, they're asking you to count the number of elements for this A prime universe, uh, the intercept B. So A prime intercept B, just now we already found that these are the elements. Without the N in front, you list down the elements. With the N in front, you count the number of elements and tell me how many elements. That's all. Okay. And shading of union is very easy. They say what, I shade what, and then full stop. Okay. And shade all both in the same direction. That's for union. Okay. We are done with set notation Venn diagram. Let's do a bit of the, for, uh, the linear in simultaneous linear inequality. Okay. So this one, I previously, I think I did some questions, so I'll go quite fast on this part. Huh? So simultaneous means you can see that you can see that there is two symbol here. Means we're going to do something like simultaneous equation. Right? We're going to do two separate. Huh? So we will do 3 quarter x minus 23 less than 5 minus x. We will also do 5 minus x less than equals to x minus 10. Okay? So some students ask me, can I do 1, 2, and then after that 1, 3? Also can. Okay, but usually my method, I mean the way my I make it very standardized for my own. When I see simultaneous linear inequality, I just do the first two and the second and the third. Okay? Hello, black pink. Okay? So then after that we will solve as per normal. So let's see, ah, uh, put all the x to the left hand side. 3 quarter x plus x, 5 plus 23. So I have 7 over 4x less than 28. So I'm going to divide, x will be divided by, 28 will divide by 7 over 4, uh, 7 over 4. So x will be less than 16. So this will be the range that fulfill these linear inequality. So we're going to do the second inequality. So same thing, minus x minus x, minus 10 minus 5. Minus 2x less than equals to minus 15. Then, you see, uh, I'm going to divide by, hello, I'm going to divide by negative 2. Okay, divide by negative 2. Take note, divide by negative 2, you need to flip the sign. Flip, uh, flip. So, x will be more than equal now. Minus 15 divided by minus 2. So, x is more than 15 over 2. And usually, I put the mixed number so that I can see what are the integers on the left and on the right. So, this is 7 and a half. So, you need to find the range that fulfill both inequality. So, I usually draw number line. Okay, draw number line so that you can see better. I will write 7 and a half and I will write 16. They say x less than 16. Not, uh, it's not shaded uh, because it's no equal sign. Over here, 7 and a half and that's an equal. So, that means it's uh, shaded and it's this direction. Anytime we divide negative number, need to flip the sign. Yes. For inequality, yes. That's the one thing that you need to take note. When you divide by negative number, for inequality, you need to flip the sign. Okay? So, you can see that what is the common overlap region which is here. So, it means my final answer will be X is between... Take note, ah. Do you see a shaded here? So, it is this 7.5 and then 16. Done. Simultaneous linear inequality uh, is learned in, sometimes they teach in sec 2, sometimes they teach in sec 3. Huh? So, a lot of students, okay, see simultaneous linear inequality, they do separate, they never draw the number line and find a common region. This is very important, very, very important, okay? Then next, they say state the smallest prime number which satisfy the above inequality. So now you know that your so-called numbers, your range is between here, right? So now let's take a look. Within this range, what are the, what is the smallest prime number? Okay? 
Seven and a half definitely is not prime number. The next integer will be eight, but eight is not prime number. Nine is also not. Ten is also not. Eleven is the smallest prime number. So you will say, okay, the smallest prime number x will be equals to eleven. Okay. So in this question, they definitely will not ask you what is the largest prime number. I was the largest prime number also can because this one in the range is here, huh? So if they ask for the largest prime number, you know, 6, 15, 14, ah, if it's largest prime number, then it will be 13 within this range. For the smallest, it will be 11, okay? Uh, for simultaneous inequality, yes, I feel that you need to draw the number line in order to find out what is the common region. Okay, Raphael? So for simultaneous linear inequality, always draw out the number line to find out what is the common region between the two range. Because you are supposed to find the range that fulfill both inequality. So without drawing the number line, it's difficult to see. Eh? Okay, let's move on. Okay, so it's the same thing, but uh, it's just one additional, one more question. Eh? So we're going to do the same thing. So you see, remember I said the, this one just on the left hand side. So 2 third x minus 1 can put in decimal or mass in fraction. You want to put 7.5 also can. But if let's say it is a 7 1 third, you don't put 7.667. Okay, you put 7 1 third. Half you can put as 0.5, so it doesn't matter. You want to put 7.5, you want to put 7.5 also can. Just don't put 15 over 2. Because 15 over 2, you cannot see what is the integer. When I change it to mix number 7.5, I can easily know... Numbers that's on the left of seven and a half is seven. The integer integers on the right of seven and a half is eight. But if you write fifteen over two, you don't know what is the left, you don't know what is the right. So that's why inequality I always ask students to put in mixed number. Okay, so less than x, and then right hand side, x less than equals to two eight minus x. So let's settle the left, left hand side. So it's two third x minus x one. So this is minus one third x less than one. See ah, I'm going to divide by negative. That means that you cannot put improper. You want to put improper is not wrong. I have explained that to put improper, you cannot see what is the integer on the left and the right. Put mixed number, you'll be able to see the integer on the left and the right. Understand? Okay, so now x, I'm see ah, I'm going to divide by negative one third, right? So need to flip the sign, okay? So x will be more than negative 3. So now let's settle this side. x, 16 minus 2x. I'm going to bring the 2x over. So it's x plus 2x, 16. 3x, 16. So my x, 16 over 3. Okay, I have to change it to mixed number because I want to see what is the integers on the left and on the, on the right. Okay? Okay. So x is less than 5 and 1 third. So you can see 5 and 1 third, ah, I can visualize already. The numbers integers on my left is 5. The integers on my right is 6. Okay? Then after that, again, we need to draw the number line so that we see what is the common region. So draw the number line. I have minus 3 first, then I put 5, 1 third. x more than negative 3, unshaded, arrow all the way down to here huh? you can see then here this is equal huh? so it's shaded and this is less than so it's all the way to this side so by doing this okay you can see that the common region is this so it means that the range that fulfill both of the inequality will be x between and see this is shaded that's why i put equal huh? this is unshaded that's why no equal huh? minus 3 and 5 1 third done then they ask you, okay, write down the largest ration, rational number which satisfy this. Then just do a double check that this is exactly as this. Okay, of course this is, uh, it's just double check only. Uh, in case suddenly they, they trick you, uh, that way it's not related. So just check that they're talking about this. That means that, oh, I can look at this range and find out what is the largest rational number. So what is the largest rational number in this range? Okay. This one, most students got it wrong because they forget what is rational number. Uh, 
I'm I'm sketching here. I'm teaching here. I got no time to do draw nicely. Ah, uh. I'm not in the art class. Ah, uh. please. Of course, during exam, use the proper tools and stationery to do your work. Ah, uh. okay. Okay. So largest rational number equals to. I have to express. What is the rational numbers that is inside this range? Recurring is also rational. Huh? Fraction is also rational. Decimal, uh, terminating decimal is rational. Only non-terminating decimal is not rational. Okay, so I'm going to put one side here. Just some recap. So some example of rational some example of irrational. So some example of rationals are of course 1, 2, negative 3. These are definitely rational. Fraction 2 third uh, 1.4 with a dot in recurring decimal or even 1.256. Uh, all these are 5, 2 over 3. All these are rational. These are integers. This is fraction, this is recurring decimal, this is terminating decimal, this is fraction. All these are rational numbers. Okay, all these are rational numbers. So when we talk about irrational, I only teach set 1 to set 5. Huh? Okay, all these, uh, some examples of irrationals are pi, square root 2, square root 3, pi over 2 or 2 pi, whatever that have pi, that has pi, they are definitely irrational. Because if you press a calculator, pi is equals to this. So you can see that the decimal behind is random. There is no pattern. I cannot put them as a recurring decimal. So these, the pi, is considered irrational. I give so big hint, you know. So you, uh, your rational is still 5, are you sure? So you see square root 2, again it is random, random decimal, so it is irrational. Square root 3 is also random, so it is irrational. Take note, uh, square root 4 is not, uh, square root 4 is 2, so square root 4 is rational. Uh. Sometimes they trick you by putting square root 4, but square root 4 is just 2. Okay? So, I already did simultaneous. Please go to my YouTube channel and find the relevant video. Huh? Okay, so, see, uh, I repeat, uh, some example of rational is integers, fractions, recurring decimal, terminating decimal, mixed number. So, in this range, what is the largest rational number? Wow, my hint so big already, you cannot guess. Ah. Yes, of course I know Darius. Darius is my student. Is your, tic is your YouTube channel same as TikTok user? Huh? I don't understand. My YouTube channel information, the videos in my YouTube channel are some videos of my replay of my TikTok live and also other videos that I've uploaded from previous math, some math lesson that I did previously. So I don't think it's the same. Okay. And then the worksheet, PDF worksheet of this one, you should go to my Telegram channel. Uh, the PDF will only be uploaded tomorrow. Okay, Sam will upload tomorrow uh, together with the solution which I just wrote. Lah. Channel name, no. Uh, go to my YouTube channel. You can go to go to my TikTok bio. Okay, you can click on the link there. You can see that there's a list of buttons there. The second last button which say that you go to the YouTube. 
So click on the second last button, it will go straight away to the... Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, how? I hint so big already, nobody still know the answer. What's the largest rational number X that fulfill this range? Rafael, how? Your answer still 5, ah? Numbers that is within this range and they want the largest rational number. How? Anyone can help? What's the answer? I give so big key, no? Some example of rational. Some examples of irrational, they want the largest rational x in this range. Okay, answer is 5 one third. Because 5 one third doesn't equal, means 5 one third is included. And 5 one third... Mixed number is under the category of rational number. So this should be 5, 1, third. Okay, so be careful. Largest rational number is the fraction, 5, 1, third. Okay, let's move on. What question mark? What question mark? Don't put a question mark. You want you put a proper question. I cannot understand why it's question mark. Okay, let's move on. Okay, uh, I put in two questions whereby to form linear inequality from problem sum. Okay, too bad Minecraft is not here. Previously, he asked for this, but uh, yeah, I decided to include these two here. Huh? So let's take a look. A sports club charge a monthly membership of $25 and an admission fee of $3 per entry. If Keith enter the club n times, wow, well done, good, you learn and then teach her, well done, okay, so enter the club n times in March, so they ask you write down expression in terms of n to represent the total amount of money that Keith will pay in March, first there is a membership, that means you definitely will have to pay the membership, so that means Keith will definitely pay $25. And every time he go, he has to pay $3 per entry. So how many times he go, they call it the N times, the N. Huh? So it means that 3N. Every entry, which is the number of times he go, will give $3. So I'm going to add them together. So this is the answer for part 1. This is the expression. Okay, This is the expression whereby... 25 plus 3n. Okay, this will be the amount of money that Keith paid in March. Okay, so then next, then they ask, okay, they ask you to form an inequality to find the maximum number of times that Keith can enter the club in March if he spent less than $54. Okay, so that means you need to find a, you need to form an inequality and eventually solve it. Huh? So it means that this is the amount that in terms of expression that he can uh, he will have to pay. But his budget is less than 54. So less than 54. So I already formed the inequality. Okay, and then after that they ask you to find the maximum. So that means they ask you to solve this inequality and find out what's the maximum time. So 3n 54 minus 25, so 3n is 29, n is 29 over 3, change this to mixed number, n is less than 9 2 third. So you see, if I draw the number line, okay, 9 2 third, put the numbers integer on the left and on the right, less than means this direction going here. So by looking at this, can someone tell me what is the maximum number of times, the answer is that 
What is the maximum number of times that he can go with the budget of less than fifty-four dollars? to do this. Uh, pray hard that TikTok is not going to have technical issue again. Why? Because I forget to press record just now. Ah. Good. Nine. Okay. So that means with a budget of $54, can only go nine times, maximum nine times to the gym. Okay? So that's how you form, yes, nine. So that's how you form the uh, inequality and then solve it. So actually it's similar like solving, uh, forming equation. It's just that the symbol is no longer equal. It's, it's less than or more than it depends on this. For this question, the budget is $54. So the amount that he pay or the amount that he can afford is less than 54 Then you solve it. Okay. We shall see that. Uh, hopefully, hopefully TikTok, because usually TikTok can allow us to just download the replay. Okay, but there's a few time they have technical issue and I cannot download my replay. Okay, and I have to depend on my recording. But just now I forgot to press the record. Yeah, I only started, I just start pressing record now. <laughs> but I don't know, let's see. Let's see whether you are lucky or not. But anyway, the solutions are still here. Lah. Yeah, hopefully you can. Yeah. Okay, so the Mercedes taxi, in this is a second uh, problem sum related to inequality. Yeah. The Mercedes taxi in Singapore has a fair structure as shown in the table below. Okay, Billy only has $14 in his wallet. Form an inequality for distance that Billy can afford to travel on the taxi. So for this case, right, I'm going to let the distance be D. Let the distance be D. So when I talk about distance, then just use the alphabet D. Okay, so you see, uh, this is how you read the table. You have to pay, it's just like when you, when you go on board a taxi, you have to pay the flat price, right? Which is $3.90. Whether the whether you go up to the taxi, then you immediately alight, you still have to pay the $3.90. That's called the flat price. Okay? Then after that, variable means as you move, okay, they state here that every 400 meters, they pay 30 cents. Okay? Every 400 meters, pay 30 cents. Okay, or part that off. So this part that off is trying to tell you that, oh, okay, even if you, let's say, after that you travel 200 meters, uh, it is still counted as 30 cents. As long as you use the next block which involves a, a part of the 400 meters, it will be counted as a 30 cents. This is what it means. Uh. So, so then this, I will do this, uh, and take note, this is 400 meters. So I need to convert this to km first. 400 meter is 0 0.4 km. Okay, what I did was I just divide by 1,000. Ah. So how much that Billy can afford is you have to take the distance that travel. I'm going to divide it by 0 0.4 because I need to know how many 0 0.4 there are. And then every so-called every set, it is 30 cents. Then I have to multiply by 30 cents. And don't forget, this is only calculation of the distance. You need to plus the flat price, which is the 390. Okay? So this is the amount, this, or, or rather this is the formula to calculate how much has to pay. 390 is the flat price, plus distance divided by 0 0.4, multiplied by 0 0.3, this is the distance traveled, and then plus the 390. And because Billy only has $14, so it means that this, must be less than or equals to 14. Why there is an equal? Because the $14 is inside the wallet already. So that means I can spend maximum $14. Okay, it depends. Okay? So this is the inequality that we form. And it's only one mark means I don't have to solve. I just form the inequality. And part two, 
there's two marks and they ask you hence find the maximum distance so that means on this part you will have to solve the inequality that you uh, state here huh? so let's solve so d over 0 0.4 times 0 0.3 plus 3.9 plus 3.9 less than 14. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the 390 to the right hand side first. So D 0 0.5 times 3, 0 0.3 less than 14 minus 3.9 which is let's see ah uh, 10.1. So that means you can see ah uh, this one I put over 1 so it means it's 0 0.3 D over 0 0.4 10.1 this is 10.1 okay so now the big question is how are you going to settle this one if I rewrite actually this is like that uh, 0 0.3 over 0 0.4 D 10.1 so my D simply just take 10.1 divided by this 0 0.3 over 0 0.4 so my D will be 13 7 over 15 okay but this is a bit tricky ah. Huh? this is a bit tricky ah. Huh? this is a bit tricky because they ask what's the maximum distance that Billy can travel on the taxi maximum distance okay If your part 1 is wrong, your part 2 definitely will not be correct. Right? Because you use your part 1 to solve. Uh. Okay. So, take note. Uh, this is a bit tricky. Uh. So, actually what you need to do is, uh, I have to see 10 point, uh, I take this one. Uh, uh, how many sets do we have? Okay. So over here, let's see. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. So this is actually 13.466. This one, ah. Uh. But you cannot say that it actually travels 13.4 because it is in terms of 400 meters. So you need to do a little bit of calculation. A little bit of calculation, ah. Uh. So how to find the calculation is you will take the D over 0 0.4, which is my distance. This one, ah. Uh. Wait, uh, let me see. Uh, why am I here? One zero, one zero, one over three. Blah, 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 blah. Before I multiply by this one, time distance. Uh, how am I going to calculate the thirteen point two? Wait, uh, give me a moment. Actually, this answer should be 13.4. Round off to 3SF. Okay, round off to 3SF, it should be 13.4. Huh? This should be not 13.2, 13.4. So you see, huh? you can only travel less than or equal to 13.466. You can be less, but not more. So we round it off to 3SF, we can say that the maximum he can travel is 13.4 km. No, I don't teach P6, I only teach Sec 1 to Sec 5. Sec 5 huh? So see the range? So see how I run, uh, solve my inequality? Yeah? I solve, 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 solve. This one, for this case, is I have to put it in a decimal so that I can round it off to 3SF. So I say that, okay, the maximum distance that he can, she can, uh, he can travel is 13.4 km. You need to use 10.1 divided by 0 0.3 round off to integers and multiply by 400. But actually, technically speaking, you know why? Because they say it can part off what? Unless they say cannot part thereof, Z then it will be correct. You, you understand what I mean? Part thereof means I can also travel 100 meter. I also can travel 200 meter. I have uh, $14, ma. You, you get what I mean? Unless this question don't have the part thereof. Unless the question doesn't have the part thereof. Then yes, you are right. Using the... 10.1 divided by 0 0.3, then after that, find out the integer, and then round, multiply by 400. Okay. 
is like 13. See, I have thirteen dollars. I can spend thirteen dollars and ninety five cent. Yes, that's why I put thirteen point four. Thirteen point four six six cannot. So is it thirteen point four? See, ah, if it's thirteen point four km, I multiply by one thousand. This is the meter, right? I divide by four hundred. I have thirty three point five. Okay, I multiply it by the 0 0.3 plus back the 390, I spend $13.95. Okay? Thirteen point six will be out already. Wa. You see, uh, 13.6 is 1 times 1,000, I minus... Uh, this km are minus away divided by 434. If I take 34 times 30 cent plus 390, it will be $14.10. So I cannot put it as 13.6 because I only have $14. Right, Zach? Thirteen point four six six will cost more than fourteen dollars. Thirteen point six also will cost more than fourteen dollars. Let's see mine. Yep. Even thirteen point five also exit already. Ah, so thirteen point four is the maximum. Okay, thirteen point four is the maximum. Ah, okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. I still got question behind. Ah. Because of the word part thereof. Part thereof means I travel 100 meter, I travel 200 meter, is still also calculated. Ah. Okay, let's come, let's take a look. Metrics. Next will be metrics. Ah, metrics. I teach set 1 to set 5. Ah. Okay. So we're going to do metrics. Just now one question asked about metrics. Ah. One student asked about metrics, right? So, Alicia and Buff took a multiple choice test. Okay, the metrics show the result of the test and the marks awarded. So, this is the metrics whereby 13, 12, 0, 5, 7, and 3. And this is the marks. So, you need to find these multiplied by these. So, first, let's check whether is it a valid multiplication. Of course, when they ask you to find this, it's a valid multiplication. Ah. But I always make it a habit to find out what is whether is it a valid multiplication and what is a final order. Okay, so remember this RC. We always go by number of the row and then number of the column. So this 13 and 12 is row 2, 2 row and 3 columns. So it's a 2 by 3 matrix. This 2, 0, minus 1, we have 3 row and 1 column. So it's a 3 by 1 matrix. Okay, 3 by 1 matrix. 2 by 3 and 3 by 1. And then after that, the middle 2 numbers, it must be the same in order to be a valid multiplication. So when you cancel the 3, 3, you will know that you have a 2 by 1 matrix. 2 by 1 matrix. So you know that after you do your uh, matrix multiplication, you will end up with a 2 row and 1 column. So let's continue. So I'm going to write out here, uh, 13, 12, 0, 5, 7, and 3, 2, 0, and negative 1. So what I do is, first row, first column. So it will be 13 times 2, always write this, uh, 13 times 2 plus 0 times 0 plus 7 times negative 1. So what I did was 13 times 2 plus 0 times 0 plus 7 times minus 1. Okay, 13 times 2 plus 0 times 0 plus 7 times negative 1. And that will give us a number. Then we will go to the next row. So the next row will be 12 times 2 plus 5 times 0 plus 3 times negative 1. 
and we will end up having two numbers. Okay. And we will have 19, 21. 19 and 21. Okay, so this is how you multiply. Uh, first row, first column. Okay, and then of course, if there are some more columns, you will just continue first row, second column, first row, third column. Okay, but for this case, we only have one column. So then we will go down to the next row, first column, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So the important is you need to know what is your final order. So this is a two by one. So you know you have a two row and one column, which is correct. Okay. Next is they ask you explain what your answer in part one represent. So sometimes you find that hey, very confusing. I don't know what is what. So what you can do is you analyze what they are doing inside the numbers. They take Alicia 13, they multiply by two marks plus no attempt zero times zero mark plus 7 times minus 1. So actually the 19 represents the marks for Alicia. Correct? Right? Then when they do 12 times 2, 5 times 0, 3 times minus 1, they are actually trying to find the total marks that Perth get. Bert get. Right? So by analyzing the number, you will know that, okay, therefore you will say that, you can say 19, 21 represent the total marks that Alicia and Bert of Birth score must put the word respectively. Okay, respectively. So Alice is the first number, Birth is the second number. Okay. So this is just simple matrix multiplication. Huh? Good, okay, matrix, a lot of students always forget which one multiply by which one, okay. So just remember that you first you use your order to find out the final order, do the multiplication, and then after that, if you cannot understand, eh, the numbers are what are they trying to find, ah? go and analyze what they do inside. Oh. Then you will know that actually they are finding the score for Alicia and Bert. Okay, let's move on. Okay. The number of concert tickets sold for Saturday and Sunday show in each category is given by metric S. So they say that the ticket costs $80 for adult, $40 for senior, and $60 for children. So respectively individual is the keyword for marks. Yes, respectively is a keyword. Okay. The name also must put correctly. Lah. Okay. The first elements, because the first element represent Alicia, ma, so you must write Alicia. Ah. It doesn't make sense you put 1921 and you put birth and Alicia and then you put respectively. Then it's like A. Doesn't make sense, huh? Okay, so then represent the cost of the ticket in a 3 by 1. So they already tell you there's 3 numbers. But of course I can put horizontally, I can put vertically, correct? So 3 by 1 means 3 row, 1 column. Means you've got to put vertical. So you will say that C will be equal to 80, 40 and 16. Okay, next they ask you to evaluate the matrix T equals to S times C. So my T equals to S, which is this one. So just put 158188361231231714 and the C over here. 80, 40, and 60. So same thing, this is RC, so this is 2 by 3, this is 3 by 1. So final is still 2 by 1. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. First row, first column. So it will be 158 times 80, plus 36 times 40, plus 1, 2, 3 times 60. Go to the next row. 188 times 80 plus 15 times 40 plus 174 times 60. And we end up having two numbers. And that two numbers is 21460 and 26080. And after that, they will show us what's the meaning of these two. Right? Yes. They say, state what the elements of T represent. Okay, 
So over here, I will state that 21460 and 26080 represent, so I still don't know what is it, right? Okay, go back, let's analyze what they do. With that. Do you teach complex number during other days? Uh, no, I don't teach complex number. Complex number is not uh, in O level syllabus. Okay, so let's analyze the number. Uh. They take 158 times 80. 158 times 80, then they plus 36 times 40. 36 times 40. Then 1, 2, 3 times 60. So they are actually finding out uh, 158 times adult fee, senior citizen times the fee, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, they add them together. And that is for the first row. It means that they are finding the total for Saturday. And then the second number is finding the total for Sunday. You understand? So we will say that this one represents the amount of money collected for Saturday and Sunday respectively. Done. Okay. No problem. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Okay. I'm moving on to min mode median. Ah. Minimum median is teach in either sec one or sec no no either sec yeah either sec one or sec two most of the time is taught in sec two. So this question one is a pretty straightforward one huh? The table below shows the number of coins that each of the thirty students that were surveyed. Had, how much they had on the particular day. Huh? So this is how you read the table. Huh? So there are five students who have zero coin that day. There are two students who have one coin. There are eight students who have two coin and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So to find the mean, you need to find the average. Mean represent average. Huh? Mean represent the average. So how are you going to find the average? Hello. Okay. How do you find the average? You will take the 0 times 5 plus 1 times 2 plus 2 times 8 plus 3 times 6. Oh yeah. I need to erase this one. Okay. Plus 3 times 6 plus 4 times 4 plus 5 times 5. This is the total number of coins that we are talking about. Because 5 students, 0 coin, 2 students, 1 coin, so 2 times 1, total coin is 2. 8 times 2 is 16 coin, blah, blah, blah. So, add them together, that's the total number of coin. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry, you keep changing your name. Huh? How? Oh, now, I, now I remember the, the, the name Jonathan. All your, all your pet is called Jonathan. Okay? Divided by the total number of students. Okay? Because they want to find the average number of coins per student. So I will have to put total number of students at the denominator. How am I going to find the total number of students? Add these together. So it's just 5 plus 2 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 5. Okay. And after you press, press, press calculator, you get 2 point. Ah, yeah. The one is wrong off on. Okay, wait. Ah. So I need to calculate 0 plus 2 plus 16 plus 18 plus 16 plus 25. 77. 5 plus 2 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 30. Oh ah, yeah, actually they really tell me it's 30 students. Huh? Okay, so 77 divided by 30, that gives us 2.5666. Round it off to 3SF, 2.57, 3SF. So this is the mean. Okay, this is the mean. Huh? 
Next, to find median. Okay, median, please remember that to find the median, you need to find the middle position. So the number of data I have is 30. Eh? So always use n plus 1 divided by 2. n plus 1 divided by 2. So n is the number of data. For this case, is 30. So it's just 30 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 31 divided by 2. Not doing standard deviation question today. I did it previously already. So take a look at my YouTube channel from a previous TikTok live. So 31 divided by 2, I will have 15.5. So I will have, when I have 0.5, it means that I have two positions that I'm interested. That means two numbers are fighting for the middle position. So it's 15 and 16. So look at, let's go and see which are the number that are sitting at the 15 and 16. So over here, I have 5 data, 7, 5 plus 2 are 7 data, 7 plus 8, 15. So that means the 15 data is number 2. It means that my 16 data will go to number 3. So that means number 2 will be sitting at the 15 position, number 3 will be sitting at the 16 position. To find the median, I have to take the average of these two numbers. So it's 2 plus 3 divided by 2, which is 2.5. Okay? So, for median, you need to find the middle position. So it's always m plus 1 divided by 2. If Let's say, for example, uh, if today you have 29 data. 29 plus 1 divided by 2 is 15. It means that there's only one number sitting in the middle, which is the 15. Okay? Now, it's that you have even number of data. When I plus 1 divided by 2, I have two numbers fighting for the middle position. So, you need to go and find the two numbers sitting in the 15 and the 16 for this case because it's 15.5. Then, take the average of these two and that will be the median. Okay? Next, mode. Mode is easy. Mode simply means is okay, the median represents uh, the, the middle. Middle. The mode represent most. Okay, most frequent, ah, huh? most frequent. That means you ask yourself which one, which data appears the most. Okay, of course, look at the highest frequency. The total number of students, the eight is the highest. So my mode is two. My mode is two, ah. Huh? Even number mean median time. Time zero point five or number. Even number median is. Something point five. Odd number is fixed number. Is it like that? Ye yes, correct. So even number, you have point five. Then you have two numbers sitting in the position. If it's an odd number, you will only it's already an integer. That means it's only one number sitting in the position. Okay, Rafael. Okay, most frequent. So we know that the mode is eight. Uh, sorry, in the mode highest frequency is eight. The mode is two. Ah, uh. so therefore. Mode is equals to 2. Very straightforward. Okay. So that is for question 1. Huh? Okay, we will go to the next question. Okay. So we have this. This one a bit tricky. The mean of 5 numbers is equal to the median of these numbers, which is 8. So, uh, you see, uh, I put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They say they have 5 numbers. The average of these 5 numbers is equal to the median of this number, which is 8. Median is the middle position. So, that means I only have one middle position here. That means 8 is sitting in the middle. Okay? They say, excluding the median, the mean of the other 4 numbers is x. So, they want you to find the value of x. Okay, so you need to form equation. So, how you're going to do this is easy. Yeah? Actually, it's quite easy. The mean, mean, you must know that the word mean is called average. They are telling you that the average of this, the other four numbers is x. So, do you agree that the total of the, the other four numbers is just taking the x? multiply by four numbers which will be four x so that means this one two three four these four numbers add up together is actually four x and what is the sum of the all the numbers it is just plus eight so the total of five numbers is actually just four x plus the eight 
And they did tell you that the mean of the five numbers is equal to the median. So that means the total, I'm going to divide by five numbers. This is the average or the mean of five numbers. They said this is equal to A. So by doing this, let's solve this. I will get 4x plus 8 equals to 40. 4x equals to 32. And I have x is equal to 8. So quite lame. Yes, indeed, it's true. All five numbers are 8. Long. Because since x is 8, that means this is 8, 8, 8, 8. 8. Okay? So this is the answer. But this is how you form the equation and solve. Okay, that's for question 2. Huh? Okay, let's move on to the last question. This question, the tricky part is the... Did I miss out one question? Wait on. This is not the one that I want. Wait on. Give me a moment. Okay. So, uh, while waiting, okay, please help me to like and share. Whoever ever follow me, please remember to follow me. Today is 27. Yes, thanks for the follow. And don't forget to go and uh, subscribe to my Telegram channel and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Huh? Okay, so okay, let's do this question then. I thought it is the other one. Okay, I think it should be okay. Lah. Okay, don't know what is that. Is that a candy? Okay, thanks for the gift. Okay, now this. This one is also a frequency table. It's just that if you notice, there is an unknown x here. So now they tell you, okay, if the mode is 4, write down the smallest possible value of x. So we know that mode is the most frequent. So let's take a look at the next higher. Huh? Over here, the highest 3, 1, 2, 5, the highest is 5 here. Okay, so if my x is a number that is left is 5, it means that I have double mode. It means that I have 3 and 4 is my mode. If I have my x is 4, means it's lower than 5, means my mode become 3. But they want your mode to be 4. So this one very easy is as long as my x is anything which is greater than 5. But, so you know that your x must be greater than 5, okay? And they want the smallest possible. So that means therefore smallest possible x equals to 6. Okay. Let's move on. Now this is uh, the part whereby it's tricky. Huh? So they say if the median is 3, find the smallest possible value of x. I'm going to put a diagram here. So, they want you to point the median at this one, 3. So, usually to do this question, usually what I do is I will list down the number. Okay? So, you must know what it means by, let's see, uh, I have three children who have zero. So, my data zero appear three times. Okay? Then, my one appear one time. My two appear two times. My three appear five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Then my four, I don't know how many times. Dot, 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 four. So I put here, this is the x. Okay? 
So now they're trying to tell you, okay, if the median is 3, okay, I have 5, 3 here. Huh? They say find the smallest possible value of x. So let's analyze, let's analyze. Huh? If my median is pointing as the first 3, okay? Remember when we talk about median, let's say for example, 5 numbers, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. When this one is the median, do you agree that the number of data on the right is the same as the number of data on the left? Okay? So for median, the so-called property is the number, the number of data on the left and on the right, they are the same. Okay? So this is the concept. Ah. This is the concept. Ah. So now let's take a look and analyze. If my median is pointing at the first tree, let's see. From here to here, tree, tree. I have six data over here. Six, ah. But, let's take a look, ah. Over here, I have already four data. Four data, ah. It means that my x must be two data, correct? So that is one possible answer. Okay? You don't take EMF? EMF, I thought it was compulsory for all students. Okay, so I know that my x is 2. Okay, level mind, let's continue. I know the answer is already 2, uh, but let's continue to analyze more. Uh. Not, the answer is not 2, some more. We have to move some more. Uh. Let's move on to if it is pointing to the second 3 to be the median. So what does that mean? It means that these data and these data must be equal. Agree? So I have 6 plus 1, so now I have 7 data. So if I want 7 data, it means that here got 3 already, right? 3, so that means I must x must have 4 data. Agree? Ah, okay. <laughs> Okay, so actually I don't have to continue with it, you see, because they ask for the smallest possible value, right? So if they ask for the smallest possible value, my answer is already 2. But let's say I want to continue to find the largest possible value of x, okay? So this is still not the largest, ah. Huh? So let's continue to analyze. So now if I'm pointing at the third tree, okay, the number of data now will have 8, right? Then after that, my data here will be 2 and it will be 6. 2 and then 6. Okay? And if I continue, continue, uh, if I continue, I will have, how many? 3 plus 6, I will have 9 data. 9 data, now it's pointing at this 3, this one. And if here I got 9 data, this side also must have 9 data, it means that this one must be 8. And now we are going to reach the last number 3. If it is last number 3, Okay, I have many data do I have? 4 plus 6, I have 10 data. And if I have 10 data here, that means I must have 10 data here. Correct? So that means it is 10. So this is how you analyze, okay? So for this question, they ask for the smallest. So in this question, uh, therefore, smallest possible x equals to 2. Okay, if this question, I'm going to additional, uh, additional question, additional. So, if you ask for the largest possible, so the largest possible x will be equals to 10. Can? Okay? Yes, largest is 10, smallest is 2. But this question asks for smaller, so the answer is 2. So, every time they ask for this kind of median, you can actually draw it out. Huh? But this one, I, pl I plot out all the numbers is because the numbers are very small. Imagine, uh, imagine the number here asks you to draw, there are 13, 0, let's say 10, 1, uh, 22, then not going to list down everything. Huh? So, if the numbers are very big, okay, if the numbers are very big, okay, then I will do, just put dot 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 dot, like example, uh, example only. Uh. If let's say I have 30, 0, 30, uh, example. 
of course i'm not going to list down 30 zero huh? you can actually just put zero dot 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 zero and then you put a uh, marking here and tell yourself that there are 30 data here okay then you continue to the next one let's say here got 11 then okay and then i'm going to put one one then put dot 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 then one and then you put here from here to here i have 11 data you don't have to list them all down if the numbers is too big okay for me i list them down because the number is very small ma. three one two five is still uh reasonable okay yes i have a degree i have a degree in engineering ntu triple e okay so this is how you do this kind of medium question to find the smallest possible and the largest possible okay now let's move on to the next part now they say that given that x equals to 3 calculate the mean giving your answer correct to 3sf okay so now let's refer to this table it's easy uh, to refer huh? so now they tell me that x is 3 okay so to find the mean is very straightforward it's just 0 times 3 so it's just 0 times 3 plus 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 5 plus 4 times 3 because they tell me x is 3 yeah? okay and i'm going to divide it by the total number of children so the children i have is did they mention anything don't have so i have to go and plus uh, 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 and plus 3 okay so this is the mean mean is the average okay so i will put here 0 3 plus okay like the number quite small 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 15 and plus 12 divided it by bracket 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 3 and i get 2.2857 and they tell us to round it off to 3sf so round off to 3sf 2.29 3sf last tiktok live i already did forming equation from problem sum so can go and refer to my tiktok live huh? okay so now they tell me uh, if another child who has child pets is added to the above set which measure mean median or mode will be a better measure of average look at the data here so now they are saying that okay number of pet is 0 1 2 3 and 4 and then after that suddenly a child who has child pet is added to the set so it means that uh, i will have a child that is 12 and then the one here okay so you must know that mean mode median is actually a representation of trying to find out what is the average okay so if i have a suddenly a data here okay i will definitely not use the average anymore you know why because average average uh, i will have to plus a child times one and when a child is a data whereby it's not quite close to the uh, majority of the data this is called a outlier they call it an outlier outlier is a data that is not like uh, close to the majority of the data and if you're going to use it to consider your average it will affect your calculation and accuracy so usually when there's an outlier we will put the outlier away and don't take the data into consideration so in this case which will be a better measure of average okay mean is definitely out okay uh mode also can but the thing is medium will be a better measure why because i only add in one student with 12 so my median is still quite close to the middle you understand so you will say that the median will be a better choice because it is not affected by every extreme extreme values huh? you can say it's extreme value or you can say not affected by the outlier okay 
Okay, so that's all for today. Okay, so we have done set notation Venn diagram, we have done matrix, we have done uh, mean mode median, and as well as simultaneous linear inequality.